Hey everyone, happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central, where we relax and craft and chit chat and work on a project together. Uh, right now, we are working on the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home Block of the Month quilt along. We are on block two. This is block two right here. We are working on that center area. I am doing it both applique and embroidery and we are on the embroidery stage right now, getting her done. And uh, there's plenty of time if you wanna join us on this project. There are four blocks total. This is only block two. We get a new block every month. So the next block won't come out till October. So if you sign up above at the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home Block of the Month link that I have above here uh, or below if you're watching the replay on YouTube, then you'll be able to join in. It is completely free. You just sign up on her list and the cutting instructions and the instructions for block one and two will be emailed to you. Uh, right away so i'd love if you join me and i'm working on it from beginning to end here every weeknight uh, and i wanted to share again if you guys didn't see it yesterday i over the weekend i finished my my uh kismet trinket box from so sweetness and i have uh some of my little uh fabric bits in the center there, but this was from also the Craft a Happy Life uh, embroidery stitch along we did uh, this last month. I made one out of jeans too, and I did a little uh, uh, improv piecing on that guy and finished, finished him up too, and I'm super excited about that. Uh, so if you wanted links for that project, it is above as well. It's the So Sweetness Kissimmee uh, trinket box. And uh, I also got the kit for mine, which included all the foam and the interfacing and zipper. So that's kind of a good little deal there. And one last thing, I got my fish museum and circus pin cushion today. So I have to show you it. Look at him, isn't he the cutest? Oh my God, look at his little legs. So this is uh, my little pin cushion. Look at his little flange thing up here. And it came with a couple little fin, uh, pins too. It's got walnuts in the middle here, walnut shells, which kind of sharpen, uh, sharpen pins and needles. But isn't he cute? So this is him for size. Oh, I love him so much. So this is the thing that I had to be online on her Etsy page at the exact time that she said things were gonna go live. And I had to hit refresh a bunch of times and after two seconds uh, I had two in my basket and then one was gone right away so I had to quick buy this guy and by the time um, I was done with that so with less than 10 seconds they were all gone so I, I was I was super happy I was able to snag one so if you guys want one of these go to her Etsy page they like I said are all gone uh, you need to get on her newsletter uh, I think she has a link to that to her website from her Etsy page and um, from there, if you sign up to her newsletter, you'll find out when she has her next restock. I think she does it about every, every week, every two weeks or so. And you can try your luck on getting one of those, but I might be there too trying to get another one because he is so cute. She has another, another character that she does with, you know, this flangey thing that goes all the way along the head. And I love it so much. Anyway, had to share that came in the mail this afternoon. Oh, and look, he matches. He matches my big ball or my big my big thing of uh, yarn here, my thread embroidery floss. So <laughs> that makes me extra happy. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, and one last thing. On Monday, we will be, yes, go stalk her other, uh, yes, in other words. Yep, on the day that she is doing her listing, you have to, you have to be there and be hit and refresh and then be ready to buy right away. Uh, the site, I have the link for it above. It's Fish Museum and Circus. That's to her Etsy site. And then on her Etsy site is a link to get her to her site where you can sign up for her, her newsletter. So that is the deal. Um, and then one last thing, we are going to be doing on Monday the, the hand-stitched project from the Wise Craft Book. So here we are. We will be starting this project on Monday. 
It is uh, English paper piecing. So if you want to learn about English paper piecing, this is a great project to start that with. First of all, it's all contained. You're not making a whole quilt. You're just making like this small little little thing. So it's a good taster if you want to if you want to give uh, give English paper piecing a try. Oh, Antoinette, you just got the book today, and the book is lovely. Like it's it's. I just made a post of my top five sewing books for quilters and it, I put this one on there. It, it really is great. Uh, Blair does a lot with reclaimed fabrics and none of the fabrics at all look kitschy or overdone or um, gimmicky. They all just look like really beautiful quilts where you're using fabric that you love. Um, and so I just really like it. So I'm going to be using some scraps for my a uh, hand-stitched English paper piecing project. Uh, the uh, templates are not in the book. The size measurements are in the book though, so you can uh, purchase templates from there. However, uh, Blair does have templates available. So if you go to the, Gr the Wisecraft store, I have a link to her blog post up here. If you scroll way down to the bottom of the blog post where it says kit, uh, if you click that, you can get to the paper pieces where you can just buy the paper pieces for this project outright. And that's that's what I have. I think it's going to make things just easy. So awesome, guys. That is what we're up to. And let's get stitching on block number two today. I had an idea this morning that it would be fun to make this door into a screen door. And I have a kind of a cute idea for that. We're going to uh, we're going to do some weaving tonight, so we'll see if this works. I'm not sure what it'll end up like, but we're going to give it a, tr a try. So, all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around. Thanks so much for being here, and thanks for all your hearts and thumbs ups and shares. That really does help um, help us in the algorithm to get more people watching, and I really do appreciate it. So thanks again. I'm going to flip you around. Okay, here we are. Oh, thanks, you guys. So, all right, here is my idea, and we are going to start with it tonight. First of all, I'm going to get this guy right next to me here because he is going to house my uh, he's going to house my little my needles tonight. I think there's my little embroidery needle, and I got to get his little face. He's so cute. I love him so much. He needs a name. I need to name him. I think. All right. So I'm going to start today with a longer needle. Uh, ooh, my, it's pretty bent, but we're going to make it work. Maybe I have another one. So this is a, a doll. Oop, that's short. Oh, that one's even more bent. We're going to do it anyway. Uh, this is a, oh, I think these are called doll needles. I'm not quite sure, but... Um, uh, these are needles that are used for doll making to help get like eyes into doll making because you know you're going through a large piece of you know 3D ness when you're making uh, when you're making stuffed animals. So that's what these are typically used for. I thought we would try stitching back and forth and then back and forth this other way and. Uh, weave in. Oh, I like that, Julie. He looks like a Zeb, doesn't he? Okay, he's gonna be Zeb. Uh, Zeb right now. He totally looks like a Zeb! Okay, I like him. All right, he's gonna have his little nose poking in over here. He needs those little eyes there, too. So, all right, I'm gonna do this too. Oh, yeah, show for zebra. Oh, I love that. Yep, I like it. All right, so I'm gonna get some floss here. Um, I'm not quite sure how much I need, but I think I may try stitching with just one one thread uh, tonight for the screen door that we're going to try. Just because I want it to feel delicate still is a screen door. So I want these itty bitty screens, uh, screen door, and um, I don't want it to be too overwhelming. So I think just one thread. So I'm gonna pull the one thread out of here. We can kind of see what, it, what it'll look like. Hmm, maybe I need two. Oh, um, I wonder if I should even use three yet. Okay, let's, let's pull one more out of here. So I'm, I'm grabbing threads from my, uh, the six strand embroidery floss by isolating one thread and holding the rest between my fingers and then just pulling it bunches up behind, but then it all releases like magic. So that is what we're doing. All right, so I'm gonna just lay 
these two next to each other and see what that looks like as far as thickness. Hmm. Let's see what one looks like again. I do want it to be kind of delicate, but I don't want it to look out of place either because we have um, everything else is three, three. And you know what? We could just do three and then make make it bigger in between, and that might be the way to go. Just just to have consistency in line. Um, but we'll we'll check. We'll just see what three looks like now. We're kind of doing a little a little check beforehand before deciding the thickness. Because the different number of threads kind of determines the thickness of, um, of the line, right? So you guys vote for one. Oh, thanks, Tamara. I appreciate that. Ooh, and you're starting an applique embroidery. That is, that is awesome. Yeah, why don't we try just one, just to do something different. So I'm gonna just pull one out of here again. All right, let's give this a try. So, I'm going to thread that needle, and you know what? I think I'm going to weave in my end over here, and then just jump over here right away. I like being able to weave in an end versus uh, trying with a knot, and you know what? We got to get this guy in the hoop, don't we? Getting ahead of myself here. All right, Zeb, you're going to have to go away. I'm afraid I'm going to knock him over, so I'm going to shush him out of the way for now but I'll bring them out again at the end. So, all right, I'm getting uh, this back in the hoop. We are working on this bottom little area here tonight. I was hoping to get a little further. I was hoping to get at least the door and the windows done, but now with this other little, other little idea, that'll take some more time, but sometimes, sometimes you gotta sacrifice time for those ideas, right? And sometimes vice versa, right? Okay, so again, I'm, I'm just gonna kind of run my fingers around the side. If it feels kind of wavy, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull on it a little bit more. I don't want to stretch the fabric too much, but I do want it to be, feel like it's being held by the hoop. Okay, I think we're good. So, all right, I'm gonna weave in the end right here to get started. And then we will try try this weaving. And you know what? I probably don't need my needle this long because I think I'm going to weave back and forth. But I bet you it will still help with this long needle. So again, I'm using a... I think they're called a doll needle. Uh, let me know if you guys know and, and if I'm wrong. Oh, hello, Kathy! How are you doing tonight? From the uh, Illinois-Iowa border. That's not too far from me. Oh God, so you guys, it, it's been so nice out lately. I spent um, almost all Sunday outside and, and we had the windows open all day Monday and all day today. And I went for a couple walks today too. And oh my God, you guys, I feel the allergies coming on. Like all of a sudden this afternoon, all of a sudden, I got the scratchy eyes, I've been sneezing, and um, it ain't looking good. So I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping that just goes away, <laughs> honestly, um, because I, I don't wanna close the windows, it's so nice out. I mean, it's, it's hot and steamy in here, but, uh, but I, I want it to stay nice and warm. I just, I don't know, I don't wanna, I don't wanna close the window. Oh yeah, so Valerie, that's a good point. So uh, Blair from Wisecraft. So I'm just, first of all, I'm just gonna go up and down kind of, I don't know, maybe an eighth inch away from each other. So let's let's just kind of see, get this vertical. I'm gonna use these lines as kind of like parallel. I'm gonna compare if I'm parallel. So I'm gonna just go right, right there, right across the way. And I'm gonna go just a little ways away, kind of. Yeah, that's about an eighth of an inch. And I'm just going to, I'm just gonna kind of mark it, make a hole in there, and come down the other side. So Blair from from Wisecraft, uh, she put together a a printout 
I think you can probably get that from our Facebook page, Wisecraft. Um, but it's a printout for uh, of the hand stitched project. So it, it's not going to give you, I don't think it's going to give you the measurements for the paper pieces. Like I don't, I don't think you can actually use it for the paper pieces. However, it's a little like worksheet if you want to cut out little swatches or color it in with colored pencils and, and test, test your colored, test uh, your fabrics. So you can use it for your fabric choices. So I think this is a doll needle and uh, I'm using it because uh, in a second I will be weaving in and out of these stitches. And I think I might be making it maybe too far away from each other, but you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You could really kind of mark these out and measure them all out, but we're winging it tonight here. I might actually have to, I might actually go through a lot of floss doing this. So what we're doing is I'm going to try and imitate a, a, um, a screen door here. So I'm just going back and forth. I'm kind of just kind of guessing where to go. I can, um, I can kind of estimate by putting my needle here, like where I should end up. They're a little crooked, but that's okay. Uh, and then I'm going to come back on the other side and I'm going to weave in. I'm going to, I'm just going to basically weave. I'm going to weave back and forth through through these is it's actually a whole lot like darning. Yep, 80% exactly, Marianne. Um, it's it's a lot like darning, although I'm not using, I'm not going right next to each other. I'm leaving some gaps so it looks like a screen door. So what Marianne's referring to, I kind of I said that I say this a lot, and I don't know if I've said it lately, but um, I always just try and get a piece to like 80%. If in my head I am thinking, oh, I only have to have it be 80% good, then it helps me make decisions faster and I don't get stuck on things having to be perfect or anything. I can just, um, I can just be like, eh, it only has to be 80% and then it kind of opens up, um, it opens up kind of the world of getting things done and making decisions a little bit. So all right, I do not know how long this thread is gonna last, but we're gonna we're gonna just keep going and give it a try. So all right, I'm gonna come up on the other side now. We'll just we'll just pick a spot right here, and here's where the the long needle comes in. I'm gonna weave in and out until I hit like the horizontal mark. So I'm kind of aiming. I think I'm gonna aim for like right there. So I'm gonna just start by going over and under and over and under and then over. And that's about as far as that will get me right here. So we'll go in the fabric right here. And there's our first little thing. And you know what, I think I'm gonna come back up over on this side just cause it'll be easier for me to know whether to go over and under. So, all right, see see kind of what we're doing here? We're making a little screen door. Hopefully it doesn't look like a jail. It kind of looks like a jail right now. But all right, so since the last one we went over, like the first row we went over, now we're gonna go under. So under, over, under, over, under, over, and I think I can go all the way over. So under, yeah. Let's pull through there and get it straight. See where we'll go in. I think we'll go right kind of at that top of the hill, but in the door area. There we go. Cute. So this will kind of look like a screen door maybe. I don't know. We could have done this diagonal too, and that would have been pretty cute. All right, let's go up another bit. We'll go up right here. Ooh, and I think I might... I'll trace this with a with a back stitch when I'm done too, I think. So I'm gonna flip it around just because I think this will it'll be easier to weave. So all right, the last one I can tell was over. So now I'm gonna go under. So you're just doing the opposite of what you did last time. 
over, under, over, until the other side. All right, now I'm gonna flip around again. There, we got, a, we got our, our thread straight. Straight enough. We're going right there. <laughs> this is just gonna look like a cage. It'll be like, it's like the dungeon door almost. <laughs> eh, hopefully, we'll just call it a screen door. Um, all right, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. It's like we're, um, if this is our lake, I keep thinking that this is like the lake house, you know? We were talking about that the other day and that instead of ground, this could almost be like a lake. This just feels like a drain almost. <laughs> oh, thanks, Michelle. Yeah, I, I thought about it this morning. Like, oh, that might be fun to try. I think, I think once we're done, it'll look like a screen door. Under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over. And I think, yeah, I think we can get one more row out of this, out of this needle. And like I said, I probably wouldn't need to use the long needle. <laughs> I probably wouldn't uh, need to use the long needle for this because I am going uh, horizontally. If I would have gone vertically, then then I would have definitely needed the longer needle. But it is it is it's pretty helpful to do this with the longer needle though. So I'm still gonna do it. All right, we'll do one more this direction. Weave in our end to the best we can, and then we will grab another single another single strand of floss. Ooh, we are cutting it close with this floss. All right, under, over. Well, yeah, this is basically, if you haven't darned before, so like, you know, when you have a hole in a sweater or something, um, this is kind of very, very similar, but you know, you'd use thicker kind of wool darning thread, um, or you can use whatever you have. I've darned with, with embroidery floss before, but we would be going like right next to each other and weaving. I mean, we wouldn't leave an open weave like this. And actually like if we're filling a hole, like going over a hole for darning, we'd kind of stitch in the ends a little bit more too. But yeah, we've done that before here. Um, I think back when we were still on Periscope, I'm just adjust, adjusting my vertical guys every once in a while. All right, let's weave this in. Uh, yeah, so we've done a little a little darning before. I actually have a pile um, of stuff that needs to be repaired. And one, I have one shirt that needs to be darned. You know what, I'm gonna switch to my smaller needle uh, just to do this weaving in. Cause it's just too, it's just too close to this side here. And you know what, I think I'm gonna weave I think I'm gonna jump over here and weave back into these big stitches. I think that's gonna hold my thread the most and be easiest. It's kind of, it's delicate, just this one, one strand of floss. So I wanna make sure it holds. I don't know if I would be able to do that as well with just going in the backs of these single strands. So yep, we're taking a little more time on this than expected tonight, but I thought this would be a fun idea to try. That's why these projects, like these just nightly project sort of things are fun because, you know, you can give little things like this a try. I think it'll look like a screen door, especially once we outline it. And I think I still am going to outline the larger door with a chain stitch and then we'll get that little doorknob in there. All right, just separated another thread here. You know what, I'm going to use that smaller needle, the embroidery needle to, um, weave in the end again. Um, I think I'll weave in here again and then I'll kind of jump up this side and weave to get back to the spot versus making like a leap um, behind where I could see the thread through, if that makes sense. We could try weaving with this embroidery needle too. I think that might work. So again, I'm just weaving in the ends uh, versus tying knots because if you have, I mean, it's perfectly fine to use a knot, but I think the weaving it in three times, the back and forth three times, I think it actually holds the floss 
a little bit better than a knot. And I don't have any bumpy knots on the back to uh, catch my thread on accidentally. All my thread's just gonna glide over all these stitches. All right, let's try doing this with, see, I'm gonna come over here, hook up there, and then kind of weave in the backs of these stitches to get to where I need to be. I'm gonna try doing this with the embroidery needle and see how it works. Otherwise, we'll switch back to, to the, um, that big doll, doll making needle. Oh, it looks like the cute story, uh, storybook houses in Carmel. Okay, I'll take it. That's, that's what we're doing. A little Carmel house. All right, uh, last one was under. So I'm going over then under. Oh yeah, this works perfectly fine with this needle. It, it's a small enough space that this is, this is gonna work just fine. I mean, it is nice having that big needle so you have more to hold on to and grab, but we'll, we'll finish it up with this with the embroidery needle. Just trying to keep them parallel to each other, uh, perpendicular to, you know, my lines here and the other lines I already made. Trying to, in general, keep them the same distance apart. All right, um, under, over. There we go. Just rotating every once in a while. Oops, I think I missed a I missed some of your guys' conversation here. Alright. Yeah, the occasional wonky line is sweet. Exactly! And that's what makes it that's what makes it yours, right? Your own your own uh batch of wonkiness, right? Well, that's a good thing. I think the uh, single thread was was the way to go because it is still looking pretty hefty. If we would have done um, if we would have done more more threads for this than just the one, it would have been pretty bold. I think a little too bold. All right, so this one I don't have to go uh, bother with anymore. Um, so this one I went over, so I need to go under this time. We are almost done with the little screen. All right, kind of right in the same spot as that guy. And so you can do this really anytime you want to fill a big space like this. Hey, Aaliyah, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, so this is a, a great just filler stitch. I mean, if you want this look, clearly, I mean, you'd, you'd want, you'd have to want this look, but you know, versus a big satin stitch, this space is a bit, is a hair big for a satin stitch. So, um, you know, we're doing it this way. You can actually go back and tack down all of these, but that would change the look, um, that we're going for this little screen door. So I don't, I don't want to do that, but that can be very pretty too. Ooh, I think we might sneak one more little bit in here. One more little row. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Nancy. All right, last up, a tiny little row. So, okay, this one, we were over la under last time, so we'll go over, under, and over. Through there. Okay. Oops, just move that line a little bit. And you know, these aren't these aren't down, they're just woven. They're not tacked down or anything. So they are really movable. They will keep moving, but that's okay. It's not like a perfect permanent solid thing, and that's okay. Like I said, you could tack these down in the middle or every once in a while. Um, make a little pattern of tacking them down, but but I, I didn't really want to, I don't want to go for that look. So I'm gonna deal with it just um, being being kind of movable. All right, so I, I'm just gonna kind of try and catch as many threads as I can, even though I am only using the one strand. I might go one, I might go four times just to make sure that I'm holding everything in place. Got a little fuzzle stuck in there. There we go. 
There are nine more threads to grab. Okay, we will snip that off. All right, so now I don't need that single strand of thread anymore. <laughs> you need one for your front door. There we go. So there's a little kind of screen, the screen of the screen door uh, started. You could put like a, it would have been funny to fussy cut like a cat <laughs> and put it behind there and it just staring out the, staring out the screen door. All right, so I do have these other um, three strands from when we split the other strands. So I'm gonna use those. Again, I'm gonna separate them each uh, and then put them back together just so they lie flatter than um, how they are all twisted up here. So again, to uh, isolate one, to separate the threads, you isolate one, hold them in your fingers and just pull, zoop. you can do it super fast. And then it all releases. No knots, no nothing. Kind of crazy. So, all right, here is another thread. I'm gonna release that. And there we go. Three strands, and I know I had three strands, but again, by by undoing them like that, taking them apart and putting them back together, the thread does lie a little flatter, which can help, um, you can help, it, it helps avoid like those little loopy knots a little bit. So, all right. Uh, and you can th you can run this through like a thread conditioner. I've never used one of those before with embroidery floss, but it'd be kind of fun to try. Um, I don't have any of the any of that, but that like beeswax or I think it's called thread heaven. Is that what it's called? I don't know. Some of you guys have used it, I think. All right, so I'm going to do a back stitch around the edge here. That will just make a nice clean edge for all all these little points that we did. And then I'm gonna do a chain stitch around the outside just to give the door kind of some heft on the outside. So again, I think I'm gonna weave in this uh, and then jump to here, Oop, I mean jump to here and start the back stitch. We'll, we'll do the back stitch first. Whenever I can weave in the end somewhere close, I'll choose that over doing like an away knot, um, like how when we start our embroideries. If you missed yesterday, I used in a way not on uh, um, the hearts because I didn't want to, I didn't want to leap to the heart from anywhere. That was kind of fun. Yesterday we we did little fly stitches for the for the lacy bits around the around the heart. All right, snip my little end. Mystical puzzle. Okay, so I'm gonna just jump down to our doorway again here. And we'll just backstitch around this guy. So I'm I'm gonna try and do the backstitch where I never land in one of the screen holes. Cause that's what I wanna cover up. I wanna I wanna make a nice edge. If I go into one of those holes that already exist, um, it's gonna look like everything's going to the same point. It's not gonna look like I have this nice edge around the screen. I just think it looks a little bit prettier if you, if you miss, if you don't go in the same holes, if you go over them, like you're covering them up. This line um, I wanna feel in front of the screen lines. Yeah, so if, if I get a little closer here, you can see that I'm never I'm never gonna go actually in any of those same holes. Like here, I'm gonna skip all those. I'm gonna go a little bit above them all. You know, not so weird that my stitches don't look relatively the same. Like that one's a little bit bigger, but it's not so much horribly bigger. I'll correct it with this one. Like this stitch, I'll make a little smaller then on average, they'll, all the stitches will look, look like the same size. Here, I think we'll go right in the middle of those two screens. Keeping out those summer mosquitoes, that's what we're doing with, with the screen door. Or lake flies, if this is down by the lake. I don't know, have you guys experienced lake flies before? Those uh, 
they they come in swarms. You can see them. I mean, they don't harm you or anything. They just they just stick to everything. And they're there's just like a couple days that they're there, and they're just on everything in mass. Like a White House will look will look gray because it's covered in in lake flies. Kind of insane. And if you're driving on the highway, I'm gonna go right in the middle of these two. If you're driving on the highway, you can see them in clouds above you. Ugh, yuck. All right, almost done here. I think I might actually jump over and do this this doorknob thing while we're while we're here. Yeah, they're kind of bigger than normal flies. Well, they're skinny though. They actually look, they kind of look like big mosquitoes, but they're not mosquitoes. And then their antenna are kind of fuzzy. Fish flies, oh, I don't know what fish flies are. Maybe they're the same thing, but we just call them different. Uh, we call them lake flies. Yuck. Oh, mayflies. Oh, actually, you know what? I think that might be actually what they're called, mayflies. We call them lake flies. That could very much be, but yeah, they look like kind of slightly bigger than mosquitoes. Not huge. Not like those flying fricking dandy log legs that freak the heck out of me. Ah, yuck. I don't like those. They're not really dandy daddy long legs, but they, they look like them. Uh, nope. They're just kind of a little bit bigger than mosquitoes. And then they got those little fuzzy antenna, if I remember right. And they don't bite or anything, I don't think. They're just annoying. <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> we got talking and I forgot I was gonna do the doorknob there. So I'll I'll do that when I go back up and around and do this chain stitch. I'll I'll stop my chain stitch. Oh, it's kind of hard to stop a chain stitch though. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back up and do it now. We're just gonna leap around here a little bit. I think I'm gonna just do one long stitch here. Oh yeah, Patricia, it's something like that. They don't live, I think they live like 24 hours and they're only in town for like a week. All right, ooh, I should have maybe, I don't want my, I'm gonna do a French knot here, but I don't want it come up on the same hole that I just went into. So a little, a couple, little threads over. I'm gonna do a little French knot here. So I'm gonna uh, point my needle away from my fabric. It's helpful to lay it on the table too because you need both hands. Um, I'm gonna wrap, point it away. I'm gonna wrap around my needle twice. I'm gonna hold my fingers on the loops, then point back towards my uh, dot. And I'm gonna go on the other side of the dot. I'm not gonna go in the same hole. Pull that tight. And then I'm gonna hold that knot, those loops against the fabric until I'm all the way pulled through. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty cute. That looks like a little doorknob, right? I like it. Skeeter eaters. Oh, they're just as annoying. Oh, I wonder if those are the same thing. All right, now I'm gonna just jump back down and, and finish up this back stitch. Forgot to get that guy when I was when I was up there. I think maybe two more. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do one stitch here and then one real tiny stitch. I could have maybe estimated that better getting back down here, but it'll be okay. All right. I am kind of tempted to use a new thread to start the chain stitch. Um, just because the chain stitch does use up a lot of thread and it's easy. Um, it'd be easier to, to do it all in one, but you know what? I think we'll just keep going. We'll figure it out. All right, so chain stitch. I'm coming up on where I want to start my line and I'm making kind of a loop here with my thread and going back in the in the same hole. But before I pull the thread through, I'm going to come back up a stitch length away. I do a little less than a quarter inch. Um, I'm going to come up within that loop. So as I pull, I'm going to catch that loop, right? I'm gonna catch it right there. And I'm not gonna pull super tight because I want you to see, I want you to see that loop. If I pull too tight, 
both those lines will just squish next to each other and it'll just look, look like a fat line. I want it to look like a, like a little petal there. All right, and that's our first stitch. So I'm gonna just keep doing that. So I came out there, I'm going to make my little circle here and go back in the same hole. Come up a stitch length away and it moves. So I gotta make sure that I come up through the middle and pull until we catch it again. An easier way to do this might be, ooh, my hands position is kind of funny for that, but um, we can do it the sewing method way where you go in and out at the same time. That might be a little bit easier. Here we go. So in and out, and then I'm gonna just loop this thread underneath my needle. Oops. There we go, like that. And pull through. Just shaping them a little bit. It can be a little easier, the chain stitch, doing the sewing method. Sewing method of embroidery is just when you go in and out within the same motion. and I'm keeping it loose. I don't want them super tight. We are gonna run out of floss real soon here again. I'll show you how to end the chain stitch and then start it back up right away. Ooh, I'm gonna let it dangle a little. We're a little twisty. Okay, stitch length away. I'm doing kind of big stitches for the chain stitch. Um, I kind of like the look of, kind of like the look of it. And, um, and it goes faster when you make bigger stitches. So I'm making sure that I'm going through that loop every single time. I think I'll do one more. My thread's getting a little short and unruly for, for the chain stitches. I prefer a little longer piece. So to end it, I am going to, just like how we normally end it, I'm gonna just tack it down right on the other side of the loop. and there'll be like a small little tack there that will hold that loop in place. All right, I think it's, I think it's cute. I think it's a fun little extra thing. I, I'm happy I tried it. It's kind of silly, but I, I like it. The little, uh, the little screen door. We just had the windows open all day today and it's like, oh, we just need a nice big screen door to have open. So weaving in again, we need to get more floss. I'm putting it into Zeb, my, my little needle. Here he is again, looking all cute. <laughs> Look, he holds the needles real well there. Okay, let's get some more floss. Grabbing my, my big old, um, Big old spool and again, cutting about, I cut about 24 inches worth. You don't wanna do too long because, uh, or too long of a thread because then you're you're gonna hurt your shoulder. You're gonna just gonna be, you know, pulling the, the needle way be beyond um, what you need to. And, um, oops, a little stuck here, there we go. Just the movement of your shoulder will get tired after a while. All right, so I'm pulling out the three strands again here, isolating the one, one strand and letting it get together behind. I just run my hand through it again. All right, we got one ready to go here. Boosh. Okay, there are my three strands. Set this, my other one to the side here. All right, let's gather those up and we will finish this door. Uh, after we finish the door, I am going to move 
um, move the hoop over so we can frame uh, these these little windows. And I think the windows will just do we'll do just back stitch and then for these little scallop edges we'll do um, the like, the little fly stitches like what we did for the hearts I think. That'll be that'll be cute. Okay, let's weave in the end here again. Three times. And I always try and end up at the point where I'm going to go into the fabric. So when I weave in, I always, the first one I go towards where I want to start, then away from where I want to start, and then back towards where I want to start. It's kind of what I got going on in my head to try and remember how to do it how to get it so I can start right in that spot. Okay. Oh, Aaliyah, I have, um, all right, first of all, I'm gonna just come back up. So I'm gonna pretend that I don't even have that tack there. I'm gonna come right back up inside the loop and just keep stitching as if I never tacked it down. So um, it's, I do have it like normal size. So this is my normal size. You know, this is, uh, I think eight meters are in, or 8.7 yards, eight meters are in a normal skein of DMC. And that's, that's a pretty common measurement of the eight meters. Uh, and so I have one that is 2,100 meters. <laughs> so here's the difference between my cone and my little, uh, my little bit here. I love the, this color, so I have a big cone of it. I do, I use it for my kits and stuff too. So, um, you know, that's why, that's why I'm getting like these giant, giant cones. But they actually have like mid-size cones now. I think I have a link to, to that in the product section on, on um, this Facebook post. Oop, there we go. There, see? So it's like we we never, never stopped. But yeah, so if you want a huge cone, I mean, I could see doing like getting a big cone of red or something because it's kind of like, you could use it to make like a whole red embroidered quilt, like a traditional turkey work quilt or something. Yeah, once we started buying a, a lot of floss for the kits, then we discovered discovered the cones and we're like, these are the best things ever, giant cones of floss. We save all the cones when we empty them too. It's just crazy that you can go through that much, that much embroidery floss. I kind of love it. All right, cruising with this, this um, chain stitch now. So much easier now that I have more, more floss to work with. Oh yeah, um, I get the floss from a distributor, but I think I think they have um, um, big cones like that on Amazon now. I, I think that's what the link that I put up here for is, if I remember right. But yeah, so it's not it's not really a common thing, Aaliyah. <laughs> Just fun. I like it. But if you use one color a lot, why not? It stores well, it's cute on a shelf. All right, we are approaching the end of the little screen door. I, I think it's cute. We're getting a little, uh, little into the embroidery. I think we got lots more different kinds of stitches on, on this embroidery than the last embroidery, but that's okay. Oh, thanks, Aaliyah. Happy to have you, have you here. Have you here pop in? Is it like 3 a.m. by you? I know it's always super early when you're on here for you, but you're in the future too, which is kind of fun. All right, one last stitch here. I think this one I'm gonna go down and then come back up just so I can get precise. There we go. A little more precise doing the stabbing method. And then I'm just gonna tack this, tack this guy down. I'm kind of going underneath, underneath my fabric, my applique piece a little bit, so it's 
tucked underneath there. Oh, there we go. Look, it kind of got pulled underneath. That's perfect. Oh, you just want a, a cone because it's so fun. I approve that, <laughs> that decision. All right, I'm going to weave in this end here again. I think it'll be easier to weave in right there. And then we'll move the hoop over. Uh, I think we can do a little bit of embroidery yet tonight. Stitch something up. I'd like to get on those windows. It looks like I could weave in the end right here and then jump onto those windows. So I think I think that'll be the plan. That that way I don't have to do like an away knot or something. That's a pretty small leap there. Not sure anyone's gonna see that. Actually, I'm gonna just go ahead and do that right away. I don't really have a lot more thread here, but enough to make a few back stitches, I think. And that's good enough. One, two, floss party, three. Next time I order floss, I will, I'll show you guys the box of just full of floss. Cause I'm, I'm right now I'm, I'm in the process of using up floss, but um, I'll be getting a bunch more again soon. So all at once, it's kind of fun. Okay, at this corner here. So I think I'm just gonna start by going straight down. We're gonna just, we're gonna just do back stitch here. I just wanna do back stitch first cause then I have something to weave in the end of this floss. Yes, that'd be fun, Michelle, right? <laughs> exactly, Aaliyah, that'd be fun. trying to think um, whether I should do these little bloops, these little scallops first or second. Um, first, uh, um, the second thing being uh, versus the, the, uh, the back stitch. And I'm kind of thinking I should do the scallops first because then I can cover up the points, just how we covered up the points in the screen door. But I think that will require a new piece of floss because I don't think this is going to make it much more past this little vertical line here. You're signed up to see this block every morning. Oh, awesome. Um, signed up to see the block every morning. Do you mean the my, my YouTube replay? Uh, like if you're subscribed to the replay or to the, to my, uh, YouTube page, Penguin and Fish Movies on, on YouTube, then I think you get an email every morning of the replay. But if you're meaning block three, um, all right, Kathleen, I'm not quite sure what you're asking, but, uh, if you are signed up for this project, then yes, you will be signed up to get block, block three. Block three will come at the beginning of, of, um, October. And Gretchen, yes, I have lots more kits and they are fun and um, they're, they got a little bit more going on than some of the other kits, but they're cute and sweet and I'm really, really excited about them. And um, hopefully I'll get to share some of that with you guys soon. I'm still, uh, still getting them done. Um, we pitched them to jo Joanne's, so I'm hoping that they'll be at Joanne's as well. Um, we're working on that yet. And uh, then I'll have them for you guys too. The English paper piecing. So um, what was the question about the English paper piecing again? Whether you'll get the pattern for it? Um, the English paper piecing is separate from this project. So that's a totally other project that we're just going to be doing while we wait for the next block uh, to come out. And... Um, then that will, that's a separate thing. So if you go to the link above here, I have a link to her blog post about it, uh, the Wisecraft blog post. Um, she'll have more information there about it. 
Yeah, I mean, the nice thing about Joann's is that it is more readily available for people. So the kits, no, I don't know what kits will be there yet or if any of them will be, but regardless, we will still be making the new kits and um, they will be available. It, it, they probably won't be available till after uh, the new year though. Um, but we'll have some other fun things coming up before the holidays. All right, guys, you know what? I think we're gonna end it there tonight. Got a cute little screen door going. Um, so we will start fresh tomorrow. Uh, we will do both of these, these windows for sure. And we might really try hard to crank out the best or the rest of, um, this house tomorrow. We'll see that that might be a lot to, to do, but I'm, I'm happy we took some time to do this funny little screen door. It's so goofy. I, I kind of get a kick out of it. So, all right, guys. Oh, you're at Stateside Monday, said Langston at University. Oh, that's awesome, Malia. Have a, state, a safe flight if you haven't left yet. Um, so would the kits be a good design for a nursery? Absolutely, Michelle. Um, all my kits are still, they're still pretty, pretty cutesy and animal-based and all that. Um, you know, I do have the one Craft a Happy Life that's text-based. I will have a couple more. Uh, to go in a, a, to continue that series. Um, so you can look forward to that if you'd like that Craft a Happy Life project. And then a bunch more animals and some other things like some dinosaurs and sharks and all sorts of stuff. So I will um, share some more about that soon. Um, all right, uh, I am not going to put an address on here just because, I don't know, this is just kind of like not it doesn't represent a real house to me so I kind of like I have the little J and A on there so that's kind of how I, I customize it a little bit it's a little it's a future house maybe out on the lake somewhere <laughs> all right guys I'm gonna flip you around and we will call it a night tonight all right hello I gotta show you my cute little guy again but here we here we are this is the uh, house so we do have that first little house done yay uh so all right and we uh, have a good start on the second house we already have the heart done so that's nice um oof, maybe we can crank it out all in one night that would be awesome because we still need to sew it <laughs> there's still that uh, we still need to do all the patchwork around the outside Ooh, and here's this guy again he's so cute look at his little flat Dinosaur flangey thing on him. <laughs> I like him. All right, it's Zeb. His name is, is Zeb now. I like him. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks again for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. And thanks for the hearts and the shares and the uh, thumbs up. I, I really do appreciate that as well. Um, uh, this will go on Penguin and Fish Movies on YouTube when I'm done here. If you do click subscribe on the YouTube page, it should email you uh, when there's a new post. So when, when the replay is up uh, and you if you want to go back and, and check it out, then um, it should email you if you subscribe. So uh, Libby, there is info. It is from Fish Museum and Circus, my little dude here. Uh, I put the Etsy shop in the, the, the post above. However, it is one of those places that she, you have to get on the newsletter. Uh, there, her website's there so you can get on the newsletter. But then you have to watch the newsletter. She'll tell you exactly what time and day they go live and then they're sold in like 10 seconds or less. So I was there hitting the, the refresh button. I've tried to get one three times already, which is just, just ridiculous. And I finally was able to snag, snag one um, this time. So silly, but I love him. <laughs> All right, guys, I will check you tomorrow. Um, we'll get this embroidery done, hopefully, maybe, fingers crossed. So have a great evening and have a good Wednesday tomorrow or rest of your Wednesday if you are in the future. So see you later, guys. Good night.